These notes are about translating verbal phrases into expressions and equations. Make sure you have a piece of paper out for notes, as well as your pink reference sheet that you should have received in class titled Words and Phrases to Math Symbols. Before we get started writing expressions and equations, we want to try to help remind you of the difference between them. It's like comparing phrases and sentences in English class. An expression is like a phrase. It gives you some information, but it's not complete. So it doesn't have an equal sign or an inequality symbol in it. On the other hand, equations are like complete sentences that give you enough information to have an equal sign or maybe an inequality symbol uh, in between two pieces of information. Also, another way to help you differentiate is that expressions can be simplified. I can write them uh, in shorter form, uh, perhaps uh, making things a little bit easier. However, equations can be solved. That means that I can find the value or values uh, that should take the place of the variable in the equation. Okay, grab your pink sheet. Let's start by looking at the words that indicate addition. Here we have several words that give us a hint that we need to use a plus sign in our expression or our equation. But that doesn't mean these are the only words. Can you think of more that might also give you a hint about addition? One word that I'm suggesting to add is both. Now take a minute to think about subtraction. Here are several more words that indicate subtraction and what you really have to be careful with is which number is the minuend and which number is the subtrahend. It takes careful reading and practice. Uh, think if you can about any extra words that mean subtraction. Uh, perhaps reduced by. Notice in the center of the multiplication symbol is the word of in capital letters, all two of them. Of is a huge indicator for multiplication. When you're reading that you have 40% of an amount, it's because they want you to multiply 40% by something. Unfortunately, you can't actually put 40% in an equation. You need to change it to decimal form first. If I have two-thirds of my class going somewhere, I would have to do two-thirds times the number of people in my class. Can you think of any other words that might also indicate multiplication? Um, the thing that I'm thinking of might be a statement that says half as much. That means I would need to do one-half times some number. Or what about division? Stop and think if there are other words besides the ones that you see here that would indicate division. Uh, remember, a fraction bar indicates division. So if you're describing something as x over 5, that's a way of describing division. We also need to consider how to represent parentheses verbally. And as we've been encouraging you to do in class, if you are reading out an expression or equation with the grouping symbol, we refer to it as the quantity of. Uh, sometimes if you are specifically in the parentheses adding or subtracting, you can refer to it as the sum of or the difference of. So when you see twice the sum of, that doesn't just mean I have two things being added in parentheses, that's also indicating I should be doubling that quantity in the parentheses. However, remember there are other grouping symbols besides just parentheses. We might also talk about the square root of or the absolute value of. And we need to make sure to include those grouping symbols in our expression or equation as well. All five of those previous slides were about things that could be in expressions or equations. But when it comes to equal signs, those only go in equations. And Usually, if you have a verbal uh, sentence being changed into an equation, it's the verb part that's indicating the placement of the equal sign. So as you notice, these are all verbs here that represent equals. And again, there are other words as well, like something results in an answer of seven. That would mean equal seven. You have to make sure that you pay attention to every word. I have two phrases here, and there's only one word different, but they indicate two different things. 8 more than x indicates x plus 8. But 8 is more than x indicates 
8 greater than x. If I use that verb in there, 8 is more than, that indicates now I have a complete sentence. I have an inequality sentence in this case. 8 is greater than x. So you have to really pay attention to every word. As you're paying attention to every word, you might want to translate the phrase word for word as you read it, instead of doing it all at once. If I look at this sentence, 4 times the sum of negative 5 and b is the same as 20, that may be a lot of information to try to process and write down all at once, but if I take it piece by piece, it could make it a lot easier. When I see 4 times, I, it's pretty obvious to write down a 4 and then a multiplication sign. The sum of is an indicator of grouping symbols, so I put some parentheses down. Negative 5 and b is a way of representing addition of negative 5 and b together. Is the same as indicates our e equal sign. And then 20 there at the end. Once we've translated it, we should actually rewrite this phrase so that it's written better according to the rules of algebra. It would look like this. My 4 is right up next to the parentheses. No more multiplication symbol needed. I know that a number next to parentheses means multiply. Notice also inside the parentheses we've changed something. We've rearranged it and put the b at the front and the negative 5 at the back. The commutative property of addition tells us this is going to give us the same answer. And when we write things algebraically, you have to remember variables are going to be bullies and they're going to push their way to the front of the line can't push its way out of the grouping symbol, but there inside the grouping symbol, it's going to push its way past the negative 5 to the front of the line. Start practicing these rules now. Don't show multiplication symbols between something in front of the parentheses and the actual grouping symbol itself. When you are adding things together, put variables before numbers that are being added. Now it's going to be your turn. On your same page as your notes, I want you to do the following practice problems. I'm not going to leave them on screen very long, so you'll need to pause the video. You're not going to get the answers now at the end of this video. You need to do these practice problems and bring them with you to class.